Hi everyone, my name's Cain. Um, if you've seen the interviews on Monday, you may know a little bit about me. Um, we hope that you've been enjoying everything we've been doing for Camp Online this week. And if you've missed any of them live, then you can find them but the quiz on our Facebook or YouTube page. So tonight we've got Paul Barrett speaking and later Jess Hyde will be leading us in worship. But firstly, an exciting announcement from Dan. Okay guys, a really exciting announcement for you now. As you know, we sell loads of great M2IC merch. We've got hoodies, we've got t-shirts, but we want you to get involved. So we're running a design a t-shirt competition. We want to see your ideas of what the t-shirt of 2021 should look like. And we're really excited to get some of those produced. So what's going to happen is you get onto our website and have a look at the t-shirt design information. There's loads of terms and conditions on there that explain how to do it, but you've got to send your design into us and then we're going to shortlist them. Once we finish shortlisting, at the end of September, it's going to go to a public vote and you're going to vote for your favourites. When we have our favourites and we have our winners, they're going to be produced by us and they're going to be on sale in the 2021 camp season. We look forward to that. We want to see what you come up with. Remember, the t-shirts need to really represent what MCYC is about and the ethos of what camp really does and is. We'd love for you to send those in. See you soon. Great, so make sure you submit your t-shirt designs. I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to come up with. I can already tell they're going to be awesome. Okay, so now we're going to hand over to Jess for some worship. Father God, we just thank you for this time together now as camp. We just pray that you would come and meet us where we are. And we pray that we would really be able to connect with you as we worship you now. Amen. You are the word at the beginning. One with God. Thank you. 
are difficult even when we're faced with uncertainty we thank you that we can always trust in you and rely on you God and we just give you the glory Stop working. 
Hey everyone, my name is Paul and I was looking forward to being a Padre at camp with you this year. And sadly, that's not happened the way we would have liked. But my hope is that this week that you've been able to engage in what has been happening, you've been encouraged, you've had fun, and it's felt a little bit like MCYC in your own homes. Probably most of you are fed up of hearing and discussing lockdown by now. Some of you may even feel ready to go back to school, to spend time with friends, enjoy your nice science lessons, or maybe I've just taken that a little bit too far. But I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty fed up of lockdown now myself. I'm fed up of having to learn all these new words, whether it's unprecedented or draconian. These words that we would have never used before and will probably never use again. So for our time together, I don't want to focus on lockdown. But let's focus on the future. How many of you are excited for what is to come? For everything to become normal again? Like maybe it's seeing friends or family, spending time with them without these restrictions, being able to hug your loved ones. Maybe it's going into shops and not having to sanitise your hands every two minutes. Or maybe it's a time where we can come back together again at events, whether it's a football match, a concert or camp. I don't know about you, but those are the things that excite me. But if I've learned anything this year, I've learned that I have no idea what the future holds. You see, a couple of years ago, me and my friend Andy were walking down the street in Liverpool. The sun was shining. It was this lovely day. The shops were packed and the world was normal. And we got to the crossing and we were going over to the pier head and these two women walked right by us. And we looked at each other and we had this double take thinking, have we just seen what we thought we'd seen? because what these two women were wearing were masks. And see, we, we thought it was funny at the time, but if only you could tell me in three years time, I would have to do the same to go into a shop. That I would be considered the odd one out if I didn't have a mask on. I don't know if I'd have believed you. And I don't believe that any of you could have guessed that either. I don't believe any of you could guess that today that a mask could be a fashion accessory too. I just don't believe that anyone could have predicted a future like that. But doesn't it show how in such a relatively small amount of time, how much life can change? Doesn't it show how little we can predict about what life going forward? Doesn't it show that we have no idea what the future holds. You see, I turned 30 at the end of the month. And this year, the Liverpool won the first league title in my lifetime. You see, if you ask my mum, my mum often makes this comment that's saying that no one would have guessed it had taken this long for Liverpool to win the league again. And you hear it. As ex-players and managers and pundits all mention how no one could have expected a 30-year wait. No one can predict the future. And today we're at this same point. We just don't know what the future holds. We can't predict what is going to happen. We can have dreams and we can have hopes and plans for our future. But ultimately, we don't know what is going to happen. For some people, that might make you feel really anxious, concerned. For others, it might 
be a few of you, but you might get excited by the fact that you don't know what the future holds. The fact that there is so much possibility out there. But my question is, with no idea of what the future holds, what are we to do? Can we do anything? You see, I believe there is something we can choose to do. It may not answer all our questions, it may not make all those uncertain feelings go away, but we can do something. In a time when the Israelites had no idea, didn't know what the future held for them, their leader at the time, Moses, chose to do something. You see, what had just happened is they just left Egypt crossing the Red Sea and were standing at the foot of Mount Sinai. And we can talk about unprecedented times because God had just turned the Nile into blood, sent a swarm of locusts and a famine. These were the epic events of the time. And the finale was heading in a place where no one could cross. They head towards the Red Sea and God made a way. And now they're here at the foot of a mountain. All these people and animals on the edge of a desert and they had no plan yet. Everything had changed and none of them could have believed in what had just happened. So what was their new normal to be? Come on, it's like imagine the craziest plan you could have ever imagined and the only reason you've actually succeeded is because God was with you. They never expected it, but now what are they to do? You see, you may have experienced something similar in your life. You may have had that place where you've thought, what am I to do? I had that experience when I left uni, but for you, it might be when you leave school or the fact that you've moved house. And now with lockdown easing, life is changing again. And you might be asking yourself, what do I do now? And here's what Moses did at the foot of that mountain. It's in Exodus 33 verses 12 to 17. And it says, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You've said, I know you by name and you have found favour with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Moses' concern was God being present with them as they left. Living in a world of uncertainty, unpredictability and change, we know God is both present and steadfast. See, our challenge is to be like Moses and ask God to go before us and lead us into an unknown future. And that might be a scary thought, to accept that we can't control everything. Maybe you've learned that over the past six months that we don't know and we can't control everything. To so accept that my future plans might not happen. But again, maybe you've learned that lesson as well. To so accept I don't know everything could be the lesson you've learned. It may be a scary thought, but the Israelites often learn those the hard way too. They had loads of ups and downs, but God kept his promises to them. You see, one promise was that they would be a nation 
with the land and they will be a blessing to all nations. God made this promise to Abraham over 400 years before and he makes this promise to you that he will never leave or forsake you today. God is present with us and is leading you by his Holy Spirit. That blessing to all the nations that we heard about. You see, that was Jesus. Jesus being this life-changing moment that still impacts people today. Because what Jesus did was he died on a cross. And that might not sound very extraordinary. But when he died, he died for you and he died for me. He died so that we could be friends with God. And you have a choice. You can be a friend of God or not. We have a choice. We can either receive God's blessing as Jesus sets us right with him. He took all that separates us from God away and now leads us into a new future with his Holy Spirit. You see, that story sounds very similar to the one of Moses, don't you think? God comes through for us and wants to lead us into a future. Our future will change. We know this, but God will lead us at all time. God provided for the Israelites in the desert. He established a nation that he called his own. And he blessed others throughout it. And this led us to Jesus. And today we live in a time with much change. You see, masks are the norm. Liverpool Premier League champions. And we still don't know what the future holds. But we can choose. Do we trust ourselves? Or do we trust God leading us? I know which one I want to pick today. And I know which one excites me more. A future that allows me to partner with God. The Holy Spirit teaching me and showing me how to grow and what to do. To be a part of what God is doing on planet Earth. Bringing healing and people back to himself. Bringing hope to the hopeless and justice to those who are in injustice. That's a future I want to be a part of. But how about you? What are you going to choose today? What are you going to choose tomorrow? We're left with a choice. And just like Moses standing on the foot of a mountain, are you going to be a someone who says, I'm only going to move if you move first? I'm only going to follow you when you lead me. That is our challenge today. Thanks, Paul. That was great, mate. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for tonight, guys, for Camp Online. I hope that and pray that God has spoken to you tonight. And I pray that this has also somehow, you know, been a good little substitute considering we weren't all able to come to camp this year. But either way, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for finding ways for us to worship you together, um, even if we're not really together in the physical sense, but that we can still worship your name. And I pray, and I thank you, Lord, for all these people that are there to worship you and to listen to your word and really take it in. And I pray that, it re that they really have taken it in and it's resonated with them in some way. I pray that next year we can all meet together and have the same camp that we always do and just have a lot of fun and worship you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, guys, so that's goodbye from all of us. We look forward to seeing you at MCYC camp or even MCYC live soon. Take care.